Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to talk about Nano. Um, we have not spoken about this coin on the channel since February 14th. I had to go look it up because it's been almost four months, but I've gotten a lot of requests to, to cover it again. So here we are, we're going to cover it in. So buckle up, we're going to go through a lot of charts. If you guys are new to the channel, we typically show charts that you won't find a lot of other places. These are custom charts that I make. Uh, I try to show things with a little bit more of a, of a data science approach rather than just pulling up TradingView every single video. So if you guys like this aspect, you like the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. would really appreciate it if you guys join. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can see up here and find a link to in the description below. We have almost 3,600 members in the group and would love to see that continue to grow as well. So. Um, you know, if you're new to the channel, we, we've primarily covered over the last several months Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and Chainlink. And I think one of the most common, you know, uh, requests that I get are, well, could you look at it for, for this coin or, or that coin? And I'm kind of doing, in a sense, like a, a throwback Thursday, but it's not actually Thursday. Uh, so I'm just going to cover Nano. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's a feeless and instant uh, cryptocurrency. So it tends to play off the narrative, you know, when, when Bitcoin, when the fees of Bitcoin are, are skyrocketing. And if you're a smaller, you know, if you're a smaller investor and you're only sending, say, like $100, if it costs you $30 to send it, uh, for instance, at, say, the peak of a speculative bubble, then you start to really wonder, okay, well, what is crypto about? Why does it cost me, you know, 30 bucks to send $100? This doesn't make sense. Um, well, you know, I'm more pragmatic. Bitcoin is not the future peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency. It's just not. It's a store of value. It's, you know, it's the king. It's the digital gold. It is not a peer-to-peer. A -peer, um, and it's clear that that's not what it's going to turn into be. Um, with that said, Nano is attempting to, to take a stab at that, at that space. And, you know, practically speaking, it, it has a lot of competition. I mean, there's other cryptocurrencies. Um, there's a lot of stable coins. I mean, I, I think stable coins, uh, you know, that's probably Nano's biggest competition in terms of, you know, in terms of, say, becoming uh, more of a peer-to-peer -peer currency. Um, because stable coins, uh, you know, at least, at least the value isn't fluctuating a lot. I mean, in the long term, maybe the, the volatility of Nano would decrease. But ultimately, I think uh, stable coins are... Um, its biggest competition. So let's go ahead and jump in. Let's go ahead and jump into the charts because while you know, while stablecoins may be ultimately the competition that it has to overcome, there's definitely a lot of room for speculation in the short term. I mean, that's essentially what the entire cryptocurrency market is all about these days. A lot of speculation, and in the event that you know fees are, are skyrocketing for Bitcoin, then the narrative behind you know a coin that is feeless and instant can take hold just like it did back in 2017, um, you know, when it went from, you know, a pennies on the dollar to $38 in a few weeks. And certainly it's retraced since then, like, like most coins. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump in. So the first chart we have here is the valuation of Nano with respect to Bitcoin. And, you know, this chart is, uh, you know, it's on a logarithmic scale. So each each major tick mark here is, is 10x. So if you're not familiar with logarithmic scales, make sure you get familiar. So this is 10x, this is 10x. But one of the things we talk about on the channel, right, is measuring a performance um, and, and looking at various milestones of Bitcoin to see how the coin performs depending on what Bitcoin is doing. And one of the things we talk about the most is the 20-week moving average. And this is the yellow line here. When we're above the 20 week, we tend to be in a bull market and holding the 20 week as support, as you can see time and time again. When we're in a bear market, we tend to be below the 20 week and holding it as resistance. When we get above it, we tend to shoot up. When we get below it, we tend to shoot down. And when this happens, when, when Bitcoin goes below the 20 week moving average, this is when a lot of altcoins tend to perform very poorly. And this is why I say I, I tend to consolidate my portfolio when that happens. When Bitcoin gets above the 20-week moving average, a lot of coins tend to shine because confidence is resuming back to the cryptocurrency market. The longer that Bitcoin stays above the 20-week, I think the more confidence that returns to the market. And you'll see you know, a lot of moves between a lot of different coins. If, you be, if, if you've been even paying half attention to the cryptocurrency market the last couple of weeks, you'll notice a lot of coins are, you know, they're, they're really moving. Um, and Nano is, is one of them. So... Let's just look to see how it performs when Bitcoin is above the 20-week. 
So this is the price in fiat. So we're first going to look at fiat. So the first time that we have here when, you know, this is the end of 2017, I mean, it's not, I, I don't think it's necessarily special that Nano pumped at this point because essentially you could throw a dart at a, at a board of a thousand cryptocurrencies and more likely than not, that coin was going to go up in value in the short term if you were doing it in late 2017. But um, what's, you know, what's interesting is, okay, it moved from, if this is 10 cents, so we're, we're around two cents over here, two or three cents. It moved from around three cents to $38 in a few weeks. So think about that. I mean, that's, that's incredible. I mean, that's an incredible move. Um, and I mean, just going from, going from three cents to 30 cents is already a 10 X and then 30 cents to $3 is another 10 X. And then they, Nano went to $38. So, I mean, it legitimately did a 1000 X move in a few months. And this is incredible. Um, and I think, you know, it was definitely playing off the narrative of, well, if, if Bitcoin, if the fees of Bitcoin are, you know, 20 bucks to send a small transaction, here we are, it's, it's fee-less and it's instant, you know, come join, come join the movement. This is pretty much the, the narrative there. Um, but you can see that when Bitcoin got below the 20 week, this is when Nano really started to drop. And when we got above it in the short term, it started to go up. Now, ultimately speaking, uh, it did go back down. It was more or less at the same price, uh, slightly below actually, when Bitcoin dropped below the 20 week. But again, a lot of altcoins during this time weren't, weren't doing so well. I mean, a lot of coins, uh, you know, pumped initially. And then in the in later part of the summer, they started to drop. And, and this is when the valuation of a lot of coins with respect to Bitcoin dropped a lot. Uh, so Nano's not, I mean, it, yeah, I get that it dropped here, uh, but it, this was pretty much par for the course for a lot of the market. Um, the next time we got above the, or say when we got below it, we continued to go down. The minute we got above, you can see a, a pump or a move upwards, uh, pretty significant. And then when we got below it, a sharp drop down. And, uh, you know, as well, you know, despite the fact that we were already moving up before Bitcoin got above the 20 week, you can see that it's continued to move up since then. So again, it's not a perfect metric. It, it works better for some coins than others, uh, you know, but at least with Nano, you can see that when we are above the 20 week, it tends to go up at least in the short term. And that's what we've seen again here. And we've seen that, you know, we've seen it go from uh, about, let's see, about 30 cents or so to a buck 20 in about two or three months. So this is a pretty impressive move. Um, we'll see where it continues to go. Now its valuation with respect to Bitcoin is, is interesting because you can see again, it looks similar. We had an initial move up. Um, it retraced in the short term when Bitcoin was making its run at $20,000 at the end of that peak. This is when the entire cryptocurrency market essentially moved up. This is when Nano went up as well broke the 20 week, it lost valuation with respect to Bitcoin. And this is the Bitcoin 20 week, not Nano's 20 week. In the short term, we broke the 20 week here, we went up, but ultimately retraced like a lot of coins. I mean, even Ethereum retraced during this time with respect to Bitcoin. Despite the fact that the price of Ethereum was going up, it couldn't keep up with the, the price of Bitcoin, uh, the, the, the rate at which the price of Bitcoin was, was moving up. And again here, when Bitcoin got above the 20 week, you can see that Nano moved up. And when it was below it, it basically just moved sideways. And when Bitcoin got back above the 20 week, it moved up again. So I think this metric looking at its valuation with respect to Bitcoin is more telling. Apart from the move in 2019, um, when Bitcoin is above the 20 week, Nano tends to gain value on it, uh, at least in the short term. You can see this, this move here, and then this one, and then this one that we're currently in. Now, this is a chart that I, I think a lot of people uh, have tended to enjoy in the past, so I just wanted to give an update. This is measuring the return on investment of Nano um, since inception, and it's normalized to, to show it against Bitcoin. So this is Bitcoin's move. Um, it's actually fairly impressive because the move that Nano saw uh, originally actually outpaced the original move that Bitcoin saw. And there's not a lot of coins that can claim this. I mean, certainly there are some, but if they, you know, if they saw a move like this, it took a lot longer. It took a few years to get to a thousand X ROI. Nano did it in, in a, in a few months. I mean, Ethereum, Ethereum saw a thousand X return on investment. If you had invested in, in Ethereum in November of 2015, um, it would have been worth 
it would have been worth like a thousand, or you, your ROI would have been a thousand X by the beginning of 2018. If you had invested in Nano in, in late 2017, um, maybe like the third quarter of 2017 or so, it would have been worth a thousand X in the first quarter of 2018. So a remarkable return on, on that investment. Um, now, of course, hindsight's 2020. Uh, the, the key is, is it going to happen again, right? I mean, we want to know, is this going to happen again? Um, but at least you can see that early on, it outperformed Bitcoin. And then it retraced harder than Bitcoin. So, it's, you know, it, it, it went up higher and then it retraced more. And now it's starting, it's starting to go back up again. So despite the fact that Nano retraced as much as it did, if you had bought it, you know, early on when it first came out, at the bottom, you still would have been up 10x. So, you know, I mean, I, I get that it gets a lot of flack uh, in terms of uh, the price going down, but at the same time, you have to realize that going up 1,000x in a few months is, is hardly sustainable. So, you, I mean, in, in terms of being practical, um, it's hard to hold something like that. So it's retraced to a, a modest 10x investment over a thousand over a thousand days or so, which by most people's standards would be an amazing ROI. Um, now the key, right, is don't be the dumb money pouring into the market up here. And we, you know, we've been saying this all along. You don't want to be the dumb money. You want to be getting in during the accumulation phase. And as we talk about on this channel, the accumulation phase uh, for for cryptocurrency and, and Bitcoin is likely 2019, 2020, and early 2021. Uh, I, I tend to think that cycles are lengthening. Uh, maybe some of you think it's a four-year cycle. It's it's you know somewhat irrelevant, but um, if it is if it is a, a lengthening cycle, then this might put Bitcoin peaking again in 2023. Um, therefore, you know there could be you know there, the the accumulation phase could could certainly last um, another year at the very least. Uh, so at least consider that. Um, you know if you if you look at the chart here, if you look at say this retracement here. And the, the initial move that Bitcoin saw, when it finally found its bottom and moved up, it looks kind of similar uh, to what Nano is doing currently. Um, maybe this is finally the bottom. I, I can't say for sure. I mean, it's, it's possible that, you know, with the pandemic and everything going on, uh, and especially with the idea of lengthening cycles, that we could go down in the short term and the, and the market needs a while to move sideways again. Um, I don't know. But... Uh, in terms of say peer-to-peer -peer currencies, if you're if you're wanting to to get exposure in that market, I mean there's certainly a lot of cryptos you could you could get. I mean obviously stable coins, but you're not going to really see an ROI there unless you're you know unless you're say lending it out or uh, adding it to a liquidity pool. Uh, Nano is one of the ones that you'll see the the, the volatility on Nano is is through the roof. Uh, maybe I should calculate the um, the Sharpe ratio to to look at the risk reward uh, factor there, but it is through the roof. And it's no, it's no surprise, I mean, it went up a thousand X in, in a few months. Um, so the question, right, is, are, you know, is this the beginning of, of the bull market? Will Bitcoin hold the 20 week moving average? So it needs to hold it. If it can hold it, then I think other currency, other cryptocurrencies will, will perform well. And we've, we've been seeing that for a long time now, the last month or so, a lot of coins have been continuing to move up in value. Uh, the 20 week moving average for Bitcoin is currently around $8,300. So as long as we stay above that, um, I think things are, are looking good. Additionally, the 50 week moving average is at around 8,700, 8,800. So even, even if we stay above that as well, we're especially looking good. Uh, so, I mean, hopefully this move continues. We'll, we'll see. We know it, it can't just go straight up forever. Um, I mean, some of you may be looking over here and saying, well, I mean, it went up a thousand X in, in a few months. Um, but we'll see what happens. You know, we'll, we'll continue to follow Nano. I, I apologize for not putting a video on the channel for a while. I just, you know, I started posting about Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and just got kind of swept away with all the data there was um, to analyze for those coins. But, you know, I, I, I do want to cover more coins on the channel so that I can um, appeal to a larger audience. Um, and finally, this one, this one shows the ROI, again, on a logarithmic scale. But this time, the day since inception is also on a logarithmic scale. So, you know, you can see Bitcoin peaked earlier on uh, and, um, you know, has retraced harder than, than Bitcoin did. So um, this is the primary, uh, the primary takeaway. So let's now uh, quickly 
um, look at the, the valuation of Nano with respect to fiat and with respect to Bitcoin. Um, so this first one here is uh, with respect to, to Bitcoin. So I drew this trend line back in, um, back in February of earlier this year. Uh, and I think I made the video, the last video I made was right here. So it was on February 14th when I, when I drew this uh, trend line and we have the lower one down here. And I told myself that if, if we break this trend line, then that's when I would do another, another video. And we've done that, so I wanted to um, keep that promise to myself in a sense uh, to show that you know, this, this trend downward, it seems like we've, we've finally broken it, and hopefully that is a, is a sign of, of good things to come. In addition, you can see the same trend with respect to the US dollar. Uh, we have finally broken above this uptrend. Again, it's just an imaginary line, right? But it's still interesting, in my opinion, um, uh, to look at. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully this is, is hopefully if we if we do come back down, maybe we'll we'll hold this as a support or something. I don't know. Uh, but I, I just wanted to show you guys the the trading view charts just so you can uh, see them. There was actually one more chart I, I wanted to to show you. I forgot about this one. So this was a chart I think I made back in uh, I want to say it was 2019. Um, but it's just logarithmic regression bands of of nano prices. And I think I made it over here because I think I fit it. I think I fit it, um, or I was trying to get a good fit to this orange line here. And then drew some tolerance bands to show. And again, these are just imaginary lines, but they help show maybe where we are within the within the general market cycle. Uh, with Bitcoin, e each time it drops down a few regression or, or it drops down a few log lines. So if if Nano were to follow the same path, we would expect the same thing. Um, but it's interesting because it did come down to this green line uh, that I drew. Uh, but of course, I didn't draw it perfectly. It looks like we came down slightly below it. Uh, but you know, what's a you know what's a few a few cents among friends, right? Uh, and now we're coming back up to the to the purple band. So um, I think we've actually already broken it during this video. I think we've uh, gone above it. So uh, maybe we'll continue heading up. And we'll keep we'll keep looking at that over the next you know market cycle as we track the the price of Nana. So I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Uh, if you do, remember to subscribe to the channel. Would love to have you join. Also, remember to check out the Telegram channel, which you can find in the description below. And finally, if you want access, we do have uh, the premium list uh, with a lot of uh, more, you know, we have more data science videos and we go into a lot of different uh, specifics on a lot of different coins and looking at risk metrics and regression lines and, you know, the best day to purchase a coin, the best hour to purchase a coin, statistically speaking, and all that sort of stuff. So if you want to check that out, check out the website into the cryptoverse.com. You'll get a welcome email and everything. Uh, so thanks for joining, guys. I'm, I'm happy to make the video. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. Give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. Bye.